and welcome back to Using the Debugger. In this lesson, we'll cover some additional features of the Eclipse Java Debugger, including hit counts and conditional breakpoints, class breakpoints and field watch points, stop and main option, the suspend command, and the step into selection command. Now you can use the debugger just fine without learning all of these commands, but knowing them could make your debugging with Eclipse more effective and more efficient. Let's look at two options we can use with breakpoints, hit counts and breakpoint conditions. First, let's open up the debug perspective and look at the breakpoints view and let's make sure we delete any breakpoints we have. Next, we'll go back to the Java perspective. We'll open up the My Library class for editing and let's go down to line 90 which is the header line of the check-in method and put a breakpoint on line 90. Now our test cases for my library are small and only involve two or three books and people. Imagine that you were checking out 50 books and there was an error on book number 48. Now you could put a normal breakpoint in and press resume 47 times to get to where you want to be in the debug process, but that would be very time consuming and tedious. Let's look at an easier way to do this. Let's run the My Library test in debug mode. So we'll open up My Library test, run debug as JUnit test. This will open up our debug perspective. Now let's run through the program and see how many times we hit our breakpoint. So here We've run the check-in method from line 74. If we press resume, we stop a second time in line 76. If we press resume again, we stop in line 77. And pressing resume one more time, we finish the test. Let's right-click on our breakpoint and look at the properties dialog. Breakpoint properties. One of the options here is hit count. This option tells the debugger not to suspend the program until this breakpoint has been hit this number of times. So let's try it. We'll check the box and set it to 3. Press OK. And now let's rerun our debug session. And this time, we only stop at line 77, which was the third time we hit the breakpoint. If we hit resume one more time, we finish the test. Now, another way to control when a breakpoint is triggered is to use a conditional statement. Let's remove this breakpoint and add a breakpoint at line 71 which is the first line of our checkout method. Let's debug the My Library test class. This time let's use the drop down list box next to the button. We can select My Library test and that will run it. Let's highlight the expression this get books for person dot size and add that to our expressions view as a watch expression. And we'll use our trick, we'll just click, then we'll use the trick shift, alt, up arrow once, twice, three times to highlight the ex expression. Then we'll right click, select watch, and that will add it as a watch expression. Now let's watch the value of this as we resume through the program. We'll see that it varies between 0 and 1. So we press resume once, it's still 0, again it's 0, now it's 1. Now it's 0, now it's 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and we're done. Now suppose we only wanted to suspend when this value was not 0. We can do this by creating a conditional breakpoint. Again, we'll go to the breakpoints view, we'll right click, select breakpoint properties. This time, we'll check the box enable condition, and notice it says control space for code assist. And we'll type in this dot get books for person 
p1 dot size greater than 0. Press OK. And now we see it says conditional next to our breakpoint. Now let's rerun the debug my library test. Go back to our expressions view and now we see that we're only stopping where this value is 1. So if I press resume, again it's 1. We press resume again, it's 1. Again it stays 1. So we only stopped at the 3 or 4 places where that expression evaluated to 1. So we can see that the hit count and enable condition options inside the breakpoint give us precise control over when our breakpoints are triggered. We can also associate breakpoints with fields instead of with lines of code. These are called watch points. For example, let's go to the person class and go down to line 22 which is where we're declaring the field maximum books. If we double click to set a breakpoint there, notice that the decoration looks different and when we hover we see it says watch point. Now let's look at this breakpoint's properties. We'll go to the debug perspective. Breakpoints, let's delete this first one. We'll right click, look at the breakpoint properties and we can see that we have the option to suspend on field access and to suspend on field modification. So we'll press OK there. Now to see how this works, let's debug the test checkout method. Go back to the Java perspective. We'll open the JUnit view. We'll expand this. We'll select the test checkout book, right click, select debug, and we're just debugging that one method. So we can see the first time we suspend, we're in the person constructor setting maximum books to the default value of 3. If we press resume, we suspend at that same line. This time we're suspending at a different line. We're suspending at the get maximum books where we're returning maximum books value. Resume again, we're back to the setting books to 3. This time we're in yet a different line. We're in the set maximum books and we're setting the value of maximum books equal to the value that's being passed in as an argument. So we can see that with one breakpoint we suspended on three different lines of code. Now watch points are very handy when a field is accessed in many places in a program and we are trying to track down where a certain value is changed or used. We can use one watch point instead of setting multiple breakpoints. We can also set a breakpoint to suspend the very first time we load a class. Let's delete this breakpoint and go to line 12 of the person class. which is where we declare the class. And if we double click there, we set a breakpoint and we see we have the green class symbol. If we look at its properties, we can see it says class prepare breakpoint. This type of breakpoint suspends the very first time a class is loaded. Let's try it. We'll rerun the test checkout book method, debug mode, and notice we suspend here at line 26 which is where we declare our first person variable and we're setting it to the new person using the person constructor. Now notice that we're also running this same constructor on line 28 but when we resume we go to the end of the test and don't stop at line 28. We only stop the first time we load the new class. There's one more type of breakpoint available. Let's select run 
Open Debug Dialog. Under Java Application My Library, that opens up My Library Run Configuration dialog. And we see we have this option here to stop and main. If we check that, then when we debug using this run configuration, we'll always stop at the very first line in the main method, which in this case is line 161. So this is handy if we are debugging a Java application and we just want to stop at the very first line of code and then step from there. Let's look at the suspend button. Suppose we have a program that's running for a long time and we want to see what's going on inside it. We can press the suspend button during a debug session to suspend the program at that moment. Let's try it. Let's go over to the Java perspective and open the My Utilities class for editing. And let's look at this method called long loop. This is simply a demonstration method that checks to see if a file exists and does that a million times. And since testing to see if a file exists is a relatively slow thing to do, this method takes a long time to execute. So it gives us time to see how the suspend button works. Now let's go to the My Utilities test class. And we can see we have a test method for long loop, but we've commented out the at test annotation so that JUnit won't run this test. So we'll uncomment that. We'll save it. Then we can go down to the long loop, right click, debug as JUnit test. And now that is started. Let's manually switch to the debug perspective. We can see that the suspend button is lit up. If we press it, we can see that we have suspended the program. If we expand the main thread, we can see the My Utilities long loop, the test, and the file exists method. The top frame is the class that works with the Windows file system since I'm running Windows. Notice that it says native method. When Java needs to interact directly with the operating system, it uses native methods that are different for each operating system. If you're running on Linux or Mac, your top line might be different. Now if we select line 132 and look at our variables, we can see that our counter i is about 415,000 out of a million. If we press resume again, wait a minute, press suspend again, go down to our main thread, look at line 132, now we can see that we're up to 563,000. So we can see that if we kept doing this we would get to the end of the loop. So to sum up, the suspend command allows us to stop a long running program without the need of inserting a breakpoint. Let's look at a time saving command in the debugger called step into selection. Let's go to the test checkout book method of the my library test class and we'll put a method entry breakpoint there. Let's go back to the debug perspective and we'll remove this breakpoint. Then we'll select the My Library Test, go Run, Debug As, JUnit Test, and we stop at line 63, the first line in the test checkout book method. Now, let's say that we wanted to step into this checkout method on line 67. There's a couple ways we could do it. We could step over and then twice and then step into this method. We could click on the line, do control R and then step in. Or we can use 
step into selection. To do that, we'll hold down the Control and the Alt key and then hover over the checkout method and notice it turns into a hyperlink. If we then click with the mouse, we step right into that method. Notice that the second stack frame is line 67, so we went to 67 and then we stepped into the test checkout book method. Now let's try it again. Let's step into the get maximum books method on line 73. So we hold down control alt, hover, left click, and we step right into the maximum books method. Let's step return. Now we can also step into a method by selecting it and then right click, step into selection, or control F5. But the hyperlink, control alt, is a little quicker. In many real life programs, we may have two or more separate methods on the same line of code. With the step into selection command, you can step right into exactly the method you want. Now, there's another cool thing we can do with a hover hyperlink, and it's potentially confusing, so let's look at it now. First, let's step return back to line 76, and Let's use the drop to frame to go back to line 71. So we'll click on 71, press drop to frame, and we move, move the debugger back to line 71. Now, as you may recall from earlier lessons, we can use F3 to open the source code for the currently selected class. For example, if we click on Get Maximum Books and press F3, we open the Get Maximum Books method of the person class. And if we go back, or Alt-Left Arrow, we go back to where we were. We can do the same thing by holding down just the CTRL key. So if we hold CTRL key down and hover, Get Maximum Books turns into a hyperlink, and clicking on that opens the source code for that class, just like F3. Now, it did not do anything with the debugger. We didn't move off of line 71, we just open the source code. And the control hover works in the editor and doesn't require that we have a debugger session run. So to review, we can use control alt hover to step into the selected method in a debug session, and we can use control hover as an alternative to F3 to look up the Java source code. We have now seen the powerful functionality of the Eclipse Java debugger. In the next lesson, we'll look at how we can use the debugger to gain a better understanding of Java programming concepts. This is the end of Lesson 5. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.